So we did talk about throwing and re-throwing an exception already. Um, and we just said that re-throwing generally means um, uh, just uh, uh, re-throwing already existing exception object without uh, creating another new object from it. So just uh, be aware of it. And so I'm not going to uh, re, uh, uh, you know, re redo this again because we already uh, have uh, discussed those two opportunities that you have for rethrowing. And uh, as as much as possible, as much as possible, I would say do this because this may unnecessarily complicate things. Because creating another exception may may look like an attractive proposition, but at the same time, you lose track of the stack, stack trace. And today, in, in the state of your application, you may think that um, everything is fine, you can deal with these exceptions, and you pretty much have understanding how all parts work. But as the application becomes more complex, this could mask away a lot of important information about the original error. So just uh, be aware of it. Uh, just uh, beware of uh, uh, re recreating brand new exception objects without the, the real need for it. And I would say that you should program your exceptions in such a way that all your exception code should be minimal, right? You really don't want to overstaff your exception objects with, with with uh, information that you could obtain uh, uh, some other ways. Uh, I think that stack trace and the original error message is pretty much the only, the, the, are the only two things that, that matter. Everything else is, uh, um, is, uh, is uh, less important. Of course, your application could use other data attributes to recover from an error, but at the same time, uh, remember that uh, uh, sticking with the original exception object gives you uh, the um, uh, the confidence in investigating bugs as opposed to doing something fancy or just because you can reproduce it you can create a new exception right so in in our example I had this demo where I said that uh, uh, right here uh, uh, I I, I uh, had the compute result, which was using this add method that could throw an exception. I was catching the exception. I wasn't, uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't completely done with doing my error handling. I can just say throw it again, and let the rest of the uh, the rest of this program deal with this exception. And so multiple uh, catch statements statements could participate in error hand handling. Or I could also say throw something new and, you know, add other, add some of its, inf add uh, extra pieces of information and stuff like that. That, that. that is really bad because I really instantly lose track of the original location uh, of the exception which took place inside the add method. So I'm not, not going to repeat all of this. This is, this is something that we already discussed, but it's very important because I dealt with the code in my life. There was once uh, at one of the hospitals, there was a, a payroll system which was uh, using similar code which would catch the exceptions multiple times and every time it would repackage the exception object and rethrow it. And so it would provide all kinds of information about the parameters and everything. The only thing that was lost was where was the original error. Uh, and that information was no longer available. And clearly, that's a really tough situation. I mean, you, you pretty much, in order to fix that, you have to reproduce the problem. And the problem there was that this payroll was like running overnight. So it was, wasn't like, OK, just try it again, just try it again. To try it again, you have to run it for about four hours, OK? So you may as well go home and like watch some TV and come back before it even has finished. So in that situation, all I could do was to change the code to undo this kind of rethrow new. And 
and change it to, to something much simpler. And then within the next couple of tries, I was able to pinpoint the place where, where the original exception was thrown. And there I went to my application manager and told her, look, I found that that particular portion of the program doesn't work. And uh, so uh, she kind of knew what I should try next. And, 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 and we, I think we came up with the fix in about a day. Um, but if, if you keep investigating the original code without any modification and you lose uh, track of the place where, where it has happened originally, that's really, really, really bad, okay? So don't do that. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just not a very good experience at all uh, to, to try to fix problems with that. All right. So... Um, um, throws exception, uh, the throws declaration, of course, uh, we discussed it uh, when we specify. So this is just another place where we talk about this. And uh, uh, for instance, if I had uh, a method here, with very practical, that demonstrates here, get file length, right? So I wanted to have my uh, file, and I wanted to find out what the length of that file is. But I really didn't want to deal with any kind of exceptions inside this method. All I have to do is this, right? That it throws input, output, exception, and whoever wants to deal with get file length has to uh, uh, has to uh, uh, do this inside try and catch uh, block uh, or statement. And this way, uh, they can they can use it. So this is very very typical. It's very popular. It just works. All right, so uh, catching input output exception example. So this is uh, uh, this is uh, the explanation for what we just said. So this uh, this method throws or may throw an exception. Therefore, to be able to call it, you have to use try and catch. Otherwise, the code will not compile, which is good. It's not not a problem. Um, throwing input output exception example. Um, so um, um, uh, if, uh, if we try to compile get file length without try and catch, this is the kind of error we, we, we get, unreported exception. So remember, if, if it says unreported exception, just remember that you forgot to use try and catch. That's what it really means. It's like, did you forget try and catch uh, on this line? And that's what uh, you should remember. So the, uh, the throw syntax um, is that, uh, uh, by the way, if you recall, we said that um, exception class itself derives from the throwable. And uh, throwable object is, uh, um, the throwable class is what it makes possible to, uh, to, to, to use it with the throw, right? So the throw cannot just, um, for instance, if we went right back here, Right? And we went to our arithmetic range error, and we changed it to uh, just to ignore the exception. So, of course, it just derives from an object. right? Uh, if we did this, and of course, I should then avoid using the, uh, the message, and I will bring back my get message, or perhaps whatever. I'm just trying to see where... If I go to back to my project here, uh, view uh, window projects, right? If I try building this, I will run into multiple problems. But uh, but the first error that I get is with the throws, because the throws has well, you try to throw the you try to uh, pretend that if you're throwing this class, then it should be deriving th from throwable, right? And um, at least uh, you need to say extends throwable. Of course, we get throwable by extending from exception because exception is uh, uh, in its own self deri deriving from throwable. So anyway, just uh, just to say that uh, this really is a requirement, and this is what makes uh, exception throwable: the fact that it's it's deriving itself from the throwable class. So that's what this uh, specific method. Uh, 
uh, was trying to do. So I'll just bring it back to the way it was. So we may try some more, uh, you know, experiments if we wanted to try a little bit more experiments. I'm just really trying to finish the series of slides today because we, because um, I really want to uh, switch over to um, other topics next week. However, let me see how many uh, things are left. Well. There is a bit of a um, information left there, so I think we can finish this on uh, um, on on Thursday or let's see how many we have. Um, uh, we have just a few minutes left, right? Is that right? Yeah. So I think we we'll just we we'll just leave it for for the next time because I, I think we already went through uh, plenty of information today and plenty of examples today. I'll post this example, but uh, we will wrap this wrap. Wrap, uh, wrap this up um, uh, on Thursday and next week so that we, uh, as soon as we start talking about the uh, graphical user interface. So definitely remember that uh, a part of the homework uh, definitely would be to uh, uh, read uh, chapter 15. Now you're completely ready to read chapter 15. Uh, and, and, and if you're in, impatient, you can even try working on this homework assignment. It should be fun because this is just a tutorial. Everyone, I expect that everyone should just follow the steps and complete this tutorial. So um, um, I guess for now, this is it. Uh, so this is to be continued uh, next week.